What's up, farm fam? As promised, here we are, Sunday evening, uh, uploading a feature video. If you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, uh, our social media platforms at The Florida Farmer, you guys know that we are attempting our best to upload feature videos on Sundays. There might be days throughout the week that we might have a cool little experience or something. We want to share that with you. Um, so we might upload a quick video to the social media platforms or even YouTube. Um, it just won't be super long, won't be in depth. But um, So make sure you are following us on our channels of Instagram and Facebook so this way you don't miss out on some really cool things. Um, it's been a busy week. Busy, busy week. Um, first week of the new year. Uh, we put out a bunch of content, try to start connecting uh, growers with consumers. Um, you know, promoting Florida agriculture, that's what we're here for. Uh, if you live in Florida, you know this is the best season because it's strawberry season. So uh, when you're at your grocery, you want to make sure that uh, you look for strawberries grown here in Florida. Um, we'll go over some labeling stuff in another video, but you definitely want to look for that fresh from Florida seal on it. Um, and make sure you get your strawberries while they're in season. Green beans, man, we're coming out of the holidays. I bet you so many people probably had green beans on their on their buffets, on their kitchen tables, on their kitchen counters, whether it was in casseroles, whether it was just regular um, dishes. You know, green beans are a big thing and they're actually grown all over Florida and they are in season right now. So look for those at your grocer, gro grocers. Um, and then of course things like Oysters we talked about, we talked about cattle, and then of course, everybody needs to start their day with a fresh glass of Florida OJ. So, Florida orange juice, OJ, orange juice, same thing. You don't want to miss it. So, um, make sure the orange juice uh, that you're drinking is from Florida Growers. I know um, one of my colleagues this week made a trip down to Arcadia, got him some Joshua Citrus orange juice. I was a little jealous because I didn't make it through uh, Arcadia, and that was on my plans of things to do. Um, but in the next couple weeks, I will be there because I love their orange juice. So, uh, as I mentioned, we are trying to promote Florida agriculture. We're also trying to connect growers and producers with the consumer. Um, one thing that we've learned during this pan pandemic was... Um, now more than ever, it's important to know where your food comes from and who, who produces it, who grows it. Um, there was times where there was issues with our supply chain and folks could not get fresh food or they weren't able to get into grocery stores to get the food. So um, knowing the grower helps a lot. There are so many farmers throughout the state that allow people to either do special orders, order boxes, or come out to the farm on, at dirt, you know, certain designated hours to pick up fresh produce. Um, so, um, plus we also have farmers markets always going on now too. A lot of them have started back up. We've got one here in Avon Park. Um, they're all over. I know Sarasota's is back going. Um, there's one out in St. Petersburg if you're up there in that area. Um, but uh, farmers markets are also a great location to pick up your fresh fresh from Florida products, you know, locally, a lot of times locally grown right there in the neighborhood. Um, so anyway, getting back to our feature video, I figured since this is the beginning of the series, um, beginning of the channel, I probably should probably talk about myself here and kind of introduce myself um, and how I got involved in agriculture and the role I play in Florida agriculture. So um, for those who don't know, um, my name is Rob. I am a first generation farmer here in Florida. Um, first Florida, gen first generation Florida farmer. Um, agriculture has played a role in my family's life for many generations. Um, my mom's side of the family has had um, agricultural operations throughout the Midwest. Uh, however, uh, she was the one that flew the coop and came to Florida so and decided to start a family here. And um, with that being said, here I am uh, starting the Florida farm generation. Um, my specialty is aquaculture production. 
I raise fish. Um, and I do diversified agriculture as well. But um, fish, is, fish is my jam. So uh, we uh, primarily do a lot of... Um, a lot of fingerlings, so smaller fish. Um, we do some in the ornamental and tropical fish industry. We also do um, tilapia, and we raise uh, tilapia a lot of times. The ones that we we provide are to consumers that are going to try their hand at homesteading, or they have aquaculture um, operations like aquaponics, um, or they just grow their tilapia at home because they want to know where their their fish are coming from, where their food is is grown. So they're they're working on self sustainability. So uh, that's kind of our niche, or my niche, I should say, and where I fall in line. A little history about myself. As I mentioned, I am a first-generation Florida farmer. Uh, so I grew up in a small rural area of Florida, just north of Okeechobee, northwest of Okeechobee, on Lake Isopoga. And um, I did not grow up on a large farm. I did not grow up on a large ranch. I grew up on the swampy banks of a very large lake and hence why I'm probably in the fish farming industry now. Um, however, <laughs> that being said, I did grow up um, surrounded by cattlemen, cattlewomen, um, because on the banks of that lake um, lie a lot of multi-generational ranches. So I had the privilege of growing up surrounded by agriculture. I grew up with um, working cows I grew up um, being on the ranches with my friends. I was surrounded by agriculture when it came to school. You know, a lot of my friends grew up in the citrus industry. So um, their horticulture, you name it, I had friends in it. Um, growing up, I was involved, heavily involved in 4-H and uh, the FFA organization. And through there, I uh, raised poultry. That is actually what I started with was poultry, um, uh, swine, I've had cattle now throughout the years uh, as well, but um, mainly as a kid, that's what I grew up in the agricultural realm, was with small livestock. Um, and as I got educated in that, I just kind of kept growing. You know, I can tell you my aquaculture experience started when I was under six months old and I got my very first goldfish. Um, as I grew up, growing up on a lake, my mom would come home from work and I would have every reptile, every fish imaginable that you could possibly catch, and I'm sure it was illegal to catch, in the bathtub waiting for her so I could be like all proud son of like, mom, look what I got. Um, so of course she quickly transitioned me to having tropical fish and ornamental fish and, um, soon a couple of tanks turned into a lot of tanks, um... A lot of tanks in her garage, a lot of above ground tanks out of her backyard, and then of course grew into um, a aquaculture facility, you know, after I became an adult. So um, on the livestock end, backing up just a little bit there, as I mentioned, I grew up um, working cows with my friends. I grew up, um, you know, around nurseries. I had sheep in school. I forgot about that too. I did have a herd of black belly Barbados sheep, um, geese. I raised swine as my my FFA project for fair, um, chickens for the fair. Uh, I guess I guess I pretty much had a well rounded experience in agriculture, and it was a passion that I fell in love with. Um, FFA has a lot of leadership development opportunities and. I kind of seized those opportunities as well, uh, which I think prepared me for life. And I would say without a doubt that my agriculture teachers and my 4-H leaders laid a very solid foundation for who I am today, um, where I'm at today, and the impact I have on um, not just Florida agriculture, but agriculture as a whole. Uh, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. That is for sure. Um, so actually got this right here. Got to go put that back on the wall. This was from, Ooh, 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 this stings a little bit. <laughs> 2002 when I was a state finalist for diversified livestock production for Florida FFA. Wow. 20 years. Mm. 
But that just goes to show for those students watching this, like nothing may happen overnight, but you will get there. And I mean, with some hard, hard work, perseverance, it was not easy, you know? Um, but Hey, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at in life. And I know I, I make an impact on our industry. I make an impact on, on my community because of how involved I was in FFA. Um, you know, a lot of people ask, you know, I, I see on the homesteading sites, especially a lot of people ask, you know, how easy is it to get involved in agriculture? How easy it is to start a homestead? How easy it is to start a farm? And I mean, you can go to YouTube and a lot of people will tell you, there's a lot of people that make it look really easy. Um, and then there's a lot of people that will tell you the truth and tell you that it's not as easy as people think. Um, I live in Florida. I have always lived in Florida uh, since I've had my operations. And not being a multi-generational farmer or rancher, I had to basically start my operation on my own. So when people come to me on these groups and they're throwing out these questions of, oh, how easy is it to start and this and that, or what does it take to start an operation? My answer usually offends people when I say a lot of hard work, because that's exactly what it takes, is a lot of hard work. Um, it is not cheap to start an operation, just in general, because I know there will be farmers watching this from around the country and be like, oh, yeah, out here in Kansas, um, <laughs> the ones out in the Northwest, Oregon, yeah, they'll, they'll tell you it's not cheap up there, but out here in Florida, um, we're very limited on land resources. And I know some folks are like, man, I've driven through the, the spine of Florida and I've seen all that open pasture land. Well, a lot of it's either conservation land or it belongs to large operations. So the ability to, to find property in a state that's constantly being developed and ag and conservation land is constantly being taken. Uh, the conservation land is not being taken away, but the agricultural land is always being taken away because of development. Um, it gets harder and harder for a young person to start an operation, especially if they're not multi-generational. Now, I'm not saying it's easy for multi-generational farmers because it's not either because they've got a whole other thing on their shoulders. And we'll talk about that in other videos. But I, I work two full-time jobs before I could just stop and start farming. Um, and even today... Farming is not 100% of how I pay my bills. Um, it allows me to have other adventures, but I, I worked two full-time jobs. I worked many part-time deals, part-time gigs, along with working those full-time jobs before I could actually purchase my first farm. Um, and I can tell you that I was, I want to say about 25 years old when I purchased 20 acres, 24, 25, something like that. Yeah, it would have been 25 years old because it was, it was a decade ago. Um, and it was just nothing but raw land at $10,000 an acre. Um, that is about the going rate for smaller parcels of property. Uh, it, in Florida, it can be 10,000 an acre. It can be 25,000. It all depends on where the location in the state is. Um, you know, is it fenced, cross fenced? Is there a house on it? Is there utilities on it? You know, what are the advantages? Is there, there are ponds? Is there barns? There's so much that goes into the price of land um, to start that. But, you know, as I said, you know, I, I got my start because coming out of high school, I worked and I worked and I worked. I worked while I was in college. I continue to work, um, putting myself through school. And then of course, trying to obtain my end goal, which was turning, you know, a backyard fish project into something bigger. Um, after I finished paramedic school in 2011 is when I actually was able to, yeah, it was a decade ago. Um, when I was able to, start my journey on the next parcel, that 20 acre parcel of land. Um, after that, it was like all of a sudden I turned on a water spout because 
it just took off. Before I, I knew it, I found myself with 66 acres. I had a massive fish facility, um, 132 in-ground ponds, um, concrete tanks, glass tanks, you name it. Um, actually, at one point, had not one, but two brick-and-mortar um, fish stores, um, one of which was with a couple of friends that were involved in the business as well. Um, it was... Uh, is a pretty big deal, but a very costly deal. And it was a lot. And I will tell you again, it was a lot of work. And I'm not trying to discourage anybody. I am all for someone chasing their dreams. I'll be the first one to be there cheering you on. Um, but I don't want anybody to be deceived that farming is easy um, or starting a farm or a homestead is easy because it is not. It does take a lot of perseverance. It takes a lot of energy and it does take money. Um, so everything was fine and dandy in 2013. I quit one of my full-time jobs. So I was down one full-time job and then my other one became fish farming. Uh, by 2014, I was able to um, comfortably quit my second or my original first time for full-time job and I became a full-time fish farmer, 100%. I did do a little bit of stuff here and there on the sides, uh, mainly helping my friends. I do have a background in business development and marketing, so I would pick up little gigs here and there on the side, but fish farming, that was my full-time job. I absolutely loved it. Loved it. Um, now, just like any other business, if you grow too fast, too big, and any little thing happens, it can all come out from underneath you. 2016, I started having some health issues. Um, was starting to get difficult and every time I would overcome those those health issues by golly gee I'd be able to manage to save the farm um, by 2018 you know it was just one thing after another I had to start cutting back and um, I knew that I was gonna have to downsize so downsize I had to do downsize is what I did and um, in 2019, uh, I ended up in the hospital for 110 days. Was not supposed to survive out of the hospital. Had I had an active um, operation, I would have lost that. Um, in fact, I was very grateful that I didn't lose the little bit that I had left. So, um, 110 days was a long time to lay in bed and regroup and figure out what I wanted to do to remain in agriculture. Um, so that's what I did. You know, I kept my mind on the end prize, which was getting healthy, um, surviving, getting healthy, getting out of the hospital and slowly getting my operation going again. Um, so 2020, of course, COVID hits, um, or the pandemic, hopefully they don't like hit me. YouTube hits me for saying that, but the pandemic hits and, um, one, at least I was prepared. I was able to fend for myself. But um, two, I noticed there was a huge need in my local community. Um, in my local community's um, Facebook group, I noticed a lot of older folks, um, a lot of people that were at high risk while the lockdown was going on. Um, they were posting things because they weren't able to get food. And that bothered me a whole lot. Um, it bothered me that I didn't have my operation um, diversified enough to where I could provide food to my local neighbors and my community. And it then started encouraging me to find a way of making that happen. Um, in August, I started a farmer's market within my community, um, started bringing in vendors, um, local produce vendors as well, um, giving them some options. In August, we thought we were climbing out of this pandemic and before we knew it, we were going back in. Um, so it has been a little bit of a lifesaver because um, our produce vendors are all outside. So it gave the community a chance to, in a socially distanced atmosphere, be able to go out and get their locally pro um, grown produce there um, versus having to worry about going into a store. Um, that all has, of course, inspired me to continue on my mission of developing my operation. Um, but it also inspired me to do this channel and push locally grown and Florida grown products even more. 
it pushed me to want to connect the grower to the consumer. Because here we had all these end end line consumers stuck in their houses or in situations where they could not go in big box stores. We also had big box stores not being able to get certain items because they were coming from other countries. You know, they were not available. When we had our own farmers dumping their own products. I had dairies, you know, four miles from my house dumping milk. Uh, I had I had tomato growers dumping tomatoes in fields. You know, not even an hour from my house. So at this point, we saw there was a, there was a huge disconnect. There was a big, huge disconnect because my community was going hungry and farmers were, had the products and they could not get them to the consumer. They couldn't even feed their neighbors. And the reason why we farm is to be able to feed the world. So we were stuck. So some folks did come together. They put together lists. The state of Florida put together a list. Um, they tried to pump it out there and, and get it out there. Like I said, we started the, the farmer's market here in, in Avon Park Lakes um, to try to, to guarantee it. Now, that's not a thing that runs every single day, but it does give them some opportunity for fresh produce, um, you know, at least once a month. Um, you know, and of course, I've got new end goals for my operation here because I am, I'm right in the middle of, of my development. I'm right in the heart of my community. So, you know, that that's put some goals on the on the board here on my operation of what I can do to um, to help provide for the community along with this channel, because through this channel, through our our Facebook, our Instagram, uh, if we could start promoting these local growers and the opportunities they have, because a lot of them do have farm stands on their on their premises. A lot of them have little stores. A lot of them even are mobile. They have trailers that they'll go around and they'll set up in parking lots or go to farmer's markets. And if we can get that information together and be able to put that out to the consumers, well, now when my 60-year-old neighbor is afraid to go to Walmart or afraid to go to a larger store because there's so many people in there or because she already knows that there's an issue with the supply chain, she can get in her car and she can drive 20 miles away or even if it's 60 miles away, she can drive and she can be the only customer there. She could have a contactless um, experience because a lot of farmers moved towards that during, during the pandemic. Um, and she'd be able to have freshly grown produce produce that she knows it's coming from and she can guarantee it's going to be there and it's not going to cause any risk to her health. So that is why the channel is here. And I was very fortunate because I have a huge network and we'll touch on that too here in a couple minutes. But through that network, um, you know, a, a lot of those folks, you know, they're helping me make sure this, this happens. They're helping, you know, produce content. They're helping get the content. They're helping make those connections. A lot of growers and producers have now reached out to me and said, hey, we need to meet up. We need to chat. Can you give me a call? They've sent me messages. You know, um, so it's, it's a whole team coming together to make the Florida farmer exactly what the state of Florida needs, what our nation needs, and what the world needs. You know, um, our goal is to provide information. You know, we definitely want to be that that connection piece, but we also want to be there. We want to be able to put on tour, tutorials. I totally said that wrong, but <laughs> we want to be able to give you the information if you do want to start a homestead. If you want to start raising bees or beekeeping, we want to be able to provide you that information. If you want to start a small little homestead, we want to give you that information. If you want to start your own herd of cattle, um, I don't know, Brangus cattle, for instance. You know what? Our goal is to be able to give you that information, get you connected. Uh, if you want to know when you're out of town, what a cool winery to visit, we want to be able to give you that winery's information, show you a little bit of our experience at that winery, and then allow you to be able to book a tour when you're in that town. So um, all of that being said brings me back to that. You know, as, as a child, I was involved in 4-H and FFA, and it opened so many doors for me 
it, it allowed a platform for me to find out and discover who I was. Let me chase that passion for agriculture. Um, as an adult, I don't forget that. Um, I stay very active uh, with our local FFA chapters here in the county I live in. You know, I'm all about giving back. Uh, there's a couple of chapters that have aquaculture um, projects going right now. We, uh, in 2013, we started a, a program in one of elementary schools, aquaculture in the classroom programs, um, where they were raising fish in their classrooms. It was a huge hit. And in fact, I had several students, they are now graduating this year. Oh my gosh. Um, but a lot of them just kept, they ended up with fish tanks at their houses. They kept with it. They're all about having aquaculture as a, as a profession. And, you know, that is, that is something awesome because all it takes, you know, my, the way I look at it is if I can get one kid to keep that passion until the time they get out of college, they're going to keep the industry alive. Now, whether it's my industry of aquaculture or any industry within agriculture, if they can keep that passion alive, if they can keep that industry alive, we have done our job. Out of our entire population, 2% are involved in agriculture. They're farmers. 2% are the ones that are farmers and ranchers and are feeding the world. So if I can get one kid, one kid from elementary school to college, wanting to say, I want to farm, I want to be a part of the agriculture community, then my job is done. So, um, I mean, obviously I want more than one kid to do it, but <laughs> if it, it, it is a success if I can get at least one person to carry on that legacy. Um, you know, getting out of, out of high school, you know, 4-H FFA kind of goes to the wayside. You become involved as an adult, reaching out and doing your community service. But, um, you know, one day I was introduced to the Farm Bureau, um, which is an agricultural education. Um, organization that uh, does a lot of legislative work, but also does a lot of promotional work too. And, you know, within their, their organization, they had a young farmers and ranchers um, group. So it was a great transition to go from FFA into this young farmers and ranchers, be surrounded with a lot of people that um, were in the same shoes as mine, you know, a uh, very diverse group of folks. Um, like I said, Florida has a ton of commodities, ton of commodities. Um, so it gave me the opportunity to fellowship, become friends. Um, some of them are like family, um, with me now, but to, uh, be able to work on legislative work, um, for the agriculture community to be able to help promote the agriculture community, but also be able to understand and learn how our operations work, how every industry works. It was a huge educational opportunity for me. And I'm still part of that organization today. I'm very active on my county level. And um, unfortunately this year I turned 36 and I aged out of the Young Farmers and Ranchers group. But every now and then I still hijack one of their meetings. Um, I definitely go back and I talk and I share my experience on what that program did for me. Um, it definitely made me a better leader within agriculture. It gave me a lot of opportunities to work on legislative affairs, um, both on a state and federal um, level. Uh, it helped me promote my industry of aquaculture on a state and federal level. Um, and then it, it made those connections. You know, I was, I was able to make those connections and have people in my network that will be in my network forever. Um, and like I said, a lot of them, they became close family friends and, you know, I, I could not be more grateful for that, that organization, that experience. Um, so where do I go from here? Where do I go now? Um, so we're now entering 2021. Of course, I've started this channel, um, this mission to help promote agriculture here in Florida, um, connect the consumers with the producers. And, um, but operation wise, uh, I am in the process of developing my aquaculture facility. It's a slow start because I, I am freshly coming out of the, that health, health crisis that I had in 2019. Uh, however, you know, I'm working on a small operation, um, with the goals of it being a high efficiency, um, low maintenance, high efficiency. And everybody's going to laugh by me saying low maintenance because anybody in agriculture knows nothing's low maintenance. Um, but, um, end goal is, is, and to be able to allow a diversified 
program as well. Like I said, I definitely wanted to be able to be a better steward for my community, be able to um, provide for my community a better provider. So I, I definitely want to diversify to be able to allow that be an opportunity. Um, so this way there is a local source for, for agricultural commodities right here in the neighborhood. Um, so that's my goals. If you follow me on Facebook, and of course, there will be times where I, I post it on the Florida Farmer, you might be able to see some of my advancements. And one day, I'll do a farm tour of my own farm, my own operation. And we'll make sure we don't filter it, we don't hide it, or anything like that. Because a lot of times, and this is the deceiving part, a lot of times when people are on YouTube, <laughs> like the professional vloggers, um, or I should say the professional vloggers, well, yeah, even the professional vloggers, some of them... I mean, you see the piles of wood and stuff laying around and that kind of stuff. But if you watch a YouTube video of some of these farms that are like because they've won an award or anything like that, you're like, oh, my gosh, it's so pristine and everything like that. And, um, you know, those editors and those photographers did an amazing job hiding <laughs> what their everyday lives are really like. Um, so, you know, one of my goals is when I show you my operation, it's going to be raw. It's going to be the real deal. Um, but, um, so now of course, you know, if we're doing out, out doing farm tours and that, as long as the farmer's okay with it, you know, if they've got a pile of wood, if it ends up in the video, it ends up in the video. But, um, but, uh, you know, that's just, that's part of, that's part of farming, you know? I mean, you have equipment laying around, you've got supplies laying around, you're, I mean, you're always keeping a stock there because you don't know when stuff's gonna happen. You get a storm that rolls through and it takes down your fences, you gotta have extra fence posts to put it up, you know? You lose um, portion of your roof on your barn, you need that spare tin to get on there, if you know, and do that patchwork until you can get a, a full roof on there. So, um, you know, I mean, and then of course, you know, some operations, depending on what they are, it just, they have a whole lot of stuff, you know, in stock because you never know when you're going to need it. Um, and the more diversified they are, the more diversified of equipment and supplies that they, they need to have. So, but um, you'll see all that. I mean, every time we do a feature video, especially if it's a farm tour, you're going to get to talk to those farmers or they're going to get to talk to you, I should say. Um, I mean, you can always talk to them. I mean, leave a comment down there. Um, but, uh, you know, and they're going to explain, you know, how it works on all their operations. One thing I can tell you that has gotten me this far in agriculture is mm, there is some things that are by the book, but there's a lot of things you're going to learn through trial and tribulation. There is a lot of things that you're going to learn from the generation before you. Um, what happens on one farm and works on one farm may not work on another farm. Now, by all means, we all have to follow best management practices and BMPs, but how one farmer does something may not work for another farmer. But the great part is, is something that they do when you learn it from them, you might be able to take it, tweak it, and it work for you. Um, and vice versa. They might learn something from you. Um, agriculture is a science and it is a learning opportunity. I mean, you never stop learning. And that's why I like farming. Um, because you learn something new every day, you have a rewarding feeling at the end of the day. Um, the work is honest work. And at the end of the day, you're helping out humanity. And, um, that is exactly why I do what I do. So that was a little bit of a background on where I came from, how I got involved in agriculture and, um, you know, um, I want you to hit that subscribe button and that notification button. If you like this video, like it too. Um, but um, hit that subscribe button so this way you can keep keep track of uh, when we release new videos because we are going to touch on everything. Just like on our on our social media pages, you know, we're going to have videos on the growers that grow the green beans, the tomatoes. We're going to have cattlemen, cattlewomen. We're going to have, um, you know, citrus growers. We're going to have everybody highlighted on this channel. So, um, and everybody's going to have different types of information to be able to provide. You know, another thing is, is homesteaders. You know, I'll have homesteaders on this too, because 
there's a lot of folks that just have small little operations, like some not even a half acre, and they're out there, you know, feeding their neighborhood. So we'll have all um, all sorts of of good information from the ag community, and we'll be connecting all kinds of producers and growers to the consumers, to you guys. We also want to hear from other folks. If you're not from Florida, we want to hear from where you're from. So leave that in the comment section. Um, don't don't think that you can't subscribe because you're not from here because it's always great to learn. Like I said, every day in farming is a learning experience. So even if you live in Nebraska, this is a great opportunity or New York City, this is a great opportunity to learn how things are done here in Florida. So when you do see um, those oranges on the shelves at your grocery store there in New York City and they say fresh from Florida, you know how they were grown and you know to support us down here. Um, so follow us. Uh, make sure you like the video subscribe hit the notification button that little bell ding 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 and um we will see you next week we'll see you on the next one follow us on facebook the uh and instagram <laughs> the florida farmer and um you'll definitely see us almost every day on there so until then until next sunday uh have a good night if you're in florida well anywhere i think everybody's freezing tonight stay warm and uh be well